Okay, well, thank you so much, Julianne. And uh, good morning, everyone. And welcome, as Julianne said, to the Spring ILR series, Innovation Gainesville, where we're going to be exploring the innovation sector here in Alachua County. Uh, I think one of the many advantages of being in a university town is that over the last several decades, uh, many of our best and brightest minds have had the opportunity to venture into the commercial sector with their ideas via our award-winning incubator, UF Innovate, at the University of Florida, and how through the incubator system, ideas are developed into businesses that are ultimately destined for the marketplace if they're successful. So leading off our series today is Mark Long, who is the Director of Incubation Services for UF Innovate, which is comprised of the Sid Martin Biotech Biotechnology Incubator in Progress Park, Alachua and the hub in downtown Gainesville. Mark's expertise in this area comes from a variety of distinguished positions, including his work as a board member with the International Business Innovation Association, and as a senior consultant for Salus Business Advisors, a global consulting company in business incubation, tech transfer, and small business formation. He's also the former president and CEO of Indiana University Research and Technology Corporation, where he directed the activities of their business incubator, Emerging Technology Center and Tech Transfer Office and the Office of Trademarks and Licensing. In addition, he was a senior lecturer in entrepreneurship and management at the IU Kelly School of Business. Mark has completed studies for over 120 business incubators and research parks around the world and has authored numerous books on incubation and economic development and is considered a global authority on policies, procedures, design, and operations for business incubators. He also has over 30 years of experience in medical diagnostics and sales, marketing, and tech services. And he completed his master's degree in molecular biology and bachelor's degree in biology from uh, the Florida State University, which <clears throat> we won't hold against him because he did ultimately find his way back to the University of Florida in Gainesville. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to you, Mark, who, and who's gonna be speaking to us today on how ideas become businesses through UF Innovate's incubation process. Thank you so much, Paula. It's a real pleasure and privilege to be here. Uh, as I was telling Paula earlier, I did grow up in Florida in Fort Pierce, lived there about 33 years in, uh, actually visited UF back in 1972, and it was too big, too big of a school for me. So I went to the small school up in Tallahassee uh, where my wife had a job and could put me through school, which was another big bonus. Uh, my father was a Christian church minister and we moved around quite a bit, ended up in Florida. I, I loved it. I went uh, back to Indiana for a while, but certainly found my way back here, and I'm very happy to be in Gainesville. I want to talk to you today about what the University of Florida does relative to commercializing the tremendous inventions and brilliant technologies that come out of UF. Uh, we get, uh, as UF Innovate, the commercialization arm of the University of Florida, we get inventions from nearly every college uh, and uh, division <laughs> within the university. Of course, a, a lot of inventions come out of the School of Medicine uh, from all different departments. We have uh, a company in our, in our incubators right now working on a vaccine for type 1 diabetes. We have uh, companies out of IFAS, the agricultural sector, working on growing better crops, curing crop diseases, and stopping animal diseases. We have a company in our incubator right now out at the Sid Martin Biotech Incubator, which I'll explain to you in a moment, who is working on a cure in chickens for salmonella. So salmonella never enters the food chain, so you don't have to worry about undercooked chicken. And they are very close to having a product on the market. Just a fantastic job I think I have 
to see new unique things and those gee whiz inventions. And there's some of them that you're like, I should have thought of that as well. So I wanna walk you through today what we do, how we do it and why we do it. And at the end, I will be happy to take questions uh, from any of you. According to a survey by the International Business Innovation Association, which is a group of all the business incubators worldwide, there's about 7,000 incubators globally, about 1,500 in the United States, the majority of which are sponsored by universities, chambers of commerce, and municipalities. 87% of companies that started in an incubator and graduated were still thriving five years after graduation. They are still operating or they've been uh, bought or assimilated, merged into another company. That is in comparison to companies who did not utilize a business incubator. Only 33% of them were still in business five years later. 78% of companies that get their start in an incubator stay in the community where they were incubated. You know, it's no secret. I am here to create and keep companies in Alachua County, in Florida. I'm not here to grow up companies to move to Boston, San Diego, San Francisco, all that. I want new jobs, new companies, here in Florida where they help our economy. This is part of the economic development mission of the University of Florida as a land grant institution. Incubators are a real key component to creating startups in a community. Think of them as a full service hotel for startups. Companies get formed, they move into the incubator, we assign them mentors, advisors. We help them find capital. We have specialized facilities such as laboratories, uh, high-speed IT servers. We have access to the power of the University of Florida Research Enterprise, which is now over $930 million in federal and private investment. So as a business incubator, we take technologies and build them and help them grow. Entrepreneurs play a very important role in the Florida economy. It's been estimated uh, by the state that 99.8% of Florida businesses are considered small business. They employ fewer than 500 employees. Firms with fewer than 100 employees actually have the largest share of that 99.8%. 3.2 million or 43% of Florida employees work in these small companies. You know, I used to tell my students in the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University, chances are very good that you're going to go to work for one of these small companies. You're not going to graduate and go to GE or Microsoft or Cisco or Amazon. That may change. I think eventually Amazon's going to own the United States in general. But you're likely to go to work for a small, small company. Also, Florida is a huge state for imports and exports. 95.3% of international exports out of Florida were made by these small companies, less than 500 people. So how do we get these companies? Where do they come from? How are they created? Typically, we get companies out of the great inventions at the University of Florida that go through the Technology Licensing Office, or OTL as we call it, the Office of tech licensing. Tech licensing started in 1980 with the Buy Dole Act. Uh, Senator Birch Buy and Bob Dole passed an act 
that allowed universities to maintain ownership of patents, copyrights, trademarks, of intellectual property created by their staff uh, and administration. University patenting has exploded from close to 500 issued patents in 1980 to more than 7,000 patents in the last measurement year, 2019. In 2018, universities introduced over 1,200 brand new products in the marketplace. And believe me, these products run the gamut from new antibiotics and new cancer treatments uh, to, to new cup holders and new plastics and new farm fertilizers, everything you can think of created at universities. Between 20, 2000 and 2020, 14,000 new products plus were created from technologies out of universities. So since then, these tech licensing offices have not only launched new products by licensing those products out to existing companies, they also have created their own startup companies, over 20,000 of them. So this is a very important piece of the national economic engine. These tech transfer offices pump billions of dollars into the US economy every year with new companies, new jobs, new products, new ideas to develop. It's an important part of our national economy. So what do I do? Uh, well, a lot of people say I write books, which I do. I write a lot of books. I uh, just wrote one on how to build, manage, and uh, design business incubators, uh, how to uh, set them up and run them with policies, procedures. But here today at UF, I run incubation services, which involves two incubators, the hub, uh, not the hub on campus, that's different. We get people that show up here all the time and they go, Where, where's the food service? Wrong building. Um, UF Innovate the Hub is one of the largest business incubators in the Southeast United States with over 106,000 square foot of incubation space. We currently are 100% full. We have 52 resident companies here. Uh, originally, this effort started in 2011. The hub opened for business in November 2011. Uh, and uh, the original construction was done downtown on the site of the old Alachua General Hospital which now we have a second building, the one with the UF Innovate sign on it here, uh, that was opened in 2018 to house more companies and offer larger office and laboratory suites. We have laboratory space, we have office space, we have manufacturing space, and we have one thing that nobody else at UF has, parking. Yes, we do. And if you've been to UF, you know that's true. So what do we do? We have adopted the byline that says we build, grow, and support the spirit of entrepreneurship. We draw companies from UF 6,000 faculty. We draw employees from a pool of 57,000 talented students. UF currently, as I mentioned, conducts more than 930 million in sponsored research. And the Office of Tech Licensing handles over 300 new inventions every single year. Now, not all of our companies are from UF. Some come here. Lately, we've been getting a lot from Brazil, which is okay with me. Um, well, I asked the first guy, how did you find us? And he said, Mr. Google, that's okay. Uh, we get lots of companies who want to come here to work with UF 
faculty uh, to uh, work with UF Research to access the tremendous research power of UF. At the hub, what makes us unique, we have a large building, it's uh, gorgeous. I encourage you to come see it when you're in town, give us a call. We'd love to show you around and as COVID becomes more of a thing in the past, we will set up public tours again. We have flexible space. Flexibility is a key term in incubation. You may start today with two employees in an office. A year from now, you may be 20 employees in an office suite. We have nine conference rooms that seat from five to 75. Uh, we have a free coffee bar. Man, these people suck down coffee like it's their life. I'm telling you, I, I make around uh, seven of those great big pots a day, but that's important. It's uh, sponsored by a law firm. And we have a brand new food truck park next door, which is fabulous. Uh, it's right off uh, Southwest 2nd and 9th, uh, four stalls for four different food trucks. It's open, open air seating. It's gorgeous. Things are really developing down here in what we now call the Gainesville Innovation District. And I'll talk about that in a moment. We offer education, seminars, lunch and learns, networking events. Of course, a lot of this was pre-COVID. We still do a lot of education online. And as I've mentioned, access to that UF research enterprise is really, really important for our clients. We have secure facilities. Here's a picture of a typical wet laboratory that we have with a chemical fume hood, uh, deionized water, uh, gas, electric, 220, 110, isolated laboratory space with single pass air available for companies doing biological research. Our leases are all inclusive, so people don't have to worry about what's my utility bill, uh, what's gonna be my internet bill. They pay the same amount every month. Very important to entrepreneurs learning to live on a budget. We provide room for expansion and wet laboratories are extremely important to developing new vaccines. Uh, we had a company out at Sid Martin working on the stability agent for the COVID vaccine so it could be stored at uh, less temperature requirements than the original Pfizer vaccine. We have companies working with animals, uh, all kinds of stuff. They need these wet laboratories. There are more wet laboratories in Gainesville anywhere in the Southeast United States. And we have the third most uh, highest concentration of wet laboratories in the entire United States. Uh, so those are very important, but they're very expensive. To build, they're around $500 a square foot. And as you might imagine, the utilities and upkeep for these much higher than office space. Let's talk for a second about our other incubator, Sid Martin Biotech. This is the crown jewel of incubation. And I was really thrilled when UF selected me to come and be the director at Sid Martin. Sid Martin is one of the oldest incubators in the United States. It is the oldest biotech incubator. The oldest incubator was built 1959 in Batavia, New York, the Batavia Industrial Center. But Sid Martin opening in 95 out in Alachua, uh, about 15 miles in de from downtown, which we constantly make the joke that half the faculty thinks it's an Idaho. It's way too far to go, but it's really only 25 minutes away. Uh, a tremendous wet laboratory incubator with a lot of amenities. Out at Sid Martin, we help entrepreneurs feed, fuel, and heal the world. We have companies working in bioenergy. We have companies working on new antibiotics, new treatments, gene therapies. We have companies working on better animal feeds. As I mentioned, a company working on a cure 
for Salmonella, uh, a company uh, working on uh, pork DNA ge genetics to improve shelf life of pork. We have all kinds of biomedical, biotechnical, entrepreneurial companies out there. So what's happened uh, over 25 years? Last year wasn't a good year to celebrate, but we did celebrate our 25th anniversary of said Martin. More than now over 100 companies have incubated there. The five-year post-graduation rate that I mentioned to you previously is at 82%. 82% of those companies have been acquired or they're still operating. Within seven years of graduation, 15% of companies are acquired. Uh, we just recently, Florida Biologics was acquired two years ago by Brammer Bio out of Boston. Brammer Bio was acquired by Thermo Fisher for $1.7 billion. That's a lot. But the big number for us is those 106 companies in 25 years have brought in more than $10.2 billion into Alachua County, into the state of Florida via venture capital, angel capital, and merger and acquisition money. That is a unbelievable number. UF basically has put that money into the Florida economy by having the Sid Martin Biotech Incubator and allowing it to function. UF provides utilities, they provide internet, they provide maintenance, they provide housekeeping. What we have to do is charge enough rent to pay employee salaries and cover program expenses. Other than that, uh, UF built Sid Martin with a combination of funding uh, from the Economic Development Administration, from the USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and their own funding. The hub downtown was built with matching money from the U.S. Economic Development Administration and the University of Florida, each put in $16 million and built the building. So there's no mortgage to carry. That allows us to charge very reasonable rent uh, to allow startup companies to get started. Uh, successful graduates from said Martin include Oxygen, fabulous country. In fact, the University of Florida's first company to have a multi-billion dollar market cap. Uh, their market is about 2.7 million. They make implantable nerve fibers, and they're used to reconstruct uh, facial nerves, uh, extremity nerves when people have accidents or, or nerve problems. Fabulous company. I recommend you look them up online. It's just amazing the work that they do. AGTC, Advanced Gene Therapy Corporation, is a graduate about five years ago from Sid Martin. They make a product to cure certain forms of childhood blindness. Fascinating video on their website where a child who cannot see is injected with AGTC's gene therapy and within 24 hours, they can see. It is just fascinating stuff that just seems almost like science fiction. Cap Design is our newest graduate. Uh, they make a product to take oxalate out of food. People that form kidney stones easily cannot eat foods in, in high in oxalate. Cap Design makes an enzyme that takes it out of the food and out of your system. And those are only a few companies out of the many, many, many that have graduated and gone on to be successful. So what have we done for UF in turn? Well, we uh, at Sid Martin were named Global Incubator of the Year by the International Business Innovation Association in 2013, 2017, and again in 2020. We are the only program 
internationally out of 7,000 programs that's won it more than one time. And not just twice, but three times. We were also named the global top science and technology incubator in 2017. And BioFlorida named us a biotechnology center of excellence in the United States in 2019. So accolades, awards, recognition, that not only helps UF in recruiting faculty and students, it helps us in recruiting companies who want to come here, who wouldn't want to be in an award-winning program. Um, the lady on the far left there is Mary Shaw. She's a native of Alachua. She just retired from working at Sid Martin uh, after 16 years of service. And I'm, she is the only person in the world to have that award attributed to her and her program three times. I'm only on there twice. Uh, she's got me beat, but she did a tremendous job at UF and we recognize her. So what makes Sid Martin so cool? Why is it such a great place? Well, it's 40,000 square foot, a little smaller, but it's all lab. It's what's called biosafety level two. If you go up to three, you need a special license and you have to wear all that space garb and everything. These are regular labs like the ones at UF that people can do work in. It is a secure facility. 24 hours a day, you have to have one of these to get in and out. The labs are about 500 to 1,000 square foot. We provide fume hoods, biosafety cabinets, gas, electric, vacuum, all that. We also uniquely have $3 million in special equipment, uh, all kinds of microscopes and cool stuff for people to use free of charge if they're a client. We help people write grants. We help people find venture money. And we've been extremely successful at that at Sid Martin. We also have a mouse house, a small animal facility behind us. Uh, UF's large animal facility is about three blocks away. We have two climate controlled greenhouses. This gentleman is actually working on citrus greening disease uh, right here, right now. Um, we have a seedling growth chamber, a hot room, access to UF's animal care services. That's a big deal for companies that have to do animal testing to get to FDA status and approval. Only three incubators across the United States offer anything close to what Sid Martin offers. So that's our incubators. That's what we do to build, grow, graduate companies, create new jobs, have those companies create new inventions and technologies that benefit all of us right here at the University of Florida. Now, what about tech licensing? How do some of the companies get to us? Because about half of our companies are right out of UF. I kind of made a little graphic for you to show you how technology transfer works. This is what Birch Bay and Bob Dole originally saw as a way to get more cool inventions to the marketplace to benefit US citizens. In a research lab, a researcher gets a result that they think is significant, the technology transfer office and them have a, a relationship. They know each other. So generally the researcher does what's called disclosing the invention to the tech transfer officer who then markets that invention after it's patented, copyright, trademarked to a startup or large company and they turn it into new products in the marketplace. In turn, there is more of a circle effect of where these large corporations, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Baxter, Abbott, they will sponsor research at the researcher's lab to create more inventions. So it gets in a cyclical mode. But the majority 
of research dollars comes from the federal government, the National Institute of Health, National Science Foundation, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Association. All those groups sponsor research at the university level. So what kind of ideas do we see here? What well, doesn't have to be scientific? It just needs a market. In other words, somebody has to want to buy it. We have all kinds of companies in our building. Uh, Diabetic Kitchen makes sugar-free foods, cake mixes, brownie mixes, muffin mixes that are diabetic friendly. They are a company in our building. Um, we have another company, Precision Silver, that makes drones that fly over crops and tell the farmer moisture content per leaf, uh, potassium and nitrogen content in the soil, and they print out a schedule of watering and fertilizing to maximize crop yields. Um, we have a company, ETEC RX, that makes a little sensor that fits in a capsule that looks just like your medicines. So the doctor can track if you're taking your medicine or not. 77% of diabetics who take oral medications are non-compliant. They don't take them regularly. So this is a way of monitoring that to ensure they're getting the full benefit uh, from the medication. We have lots of software companies that offer uh, security. Cybersecurity is a huge department at UF and a huge push. We have companies that make consumer products such as vitamins, hair care, all kinds of different companies here at the hub. As long as it has a market, it has potential. So here's that cyclical process, basically. The federal and industry research money goes into the lab. The university researcher has a new discovery. They disclose it to the Office of Technology Licensing or Office of Tech Transfer. They patent it. The Office of Technology License licenses the inventions out to a company or if there's no company out there, they create their own startup. That company makes new products. They pay a royalty stream to the university for licensing the product. That royalty stream, the majority of it, at least 70%, goes back into research and the cycle starts over and over. This is how Gatorade got to the market. This is how the intermittent windshield wiper got to the market. Now, I usually do that like intermittent windshield wiper. You know the drill. All these cool new inventions get out there because they are thought up by somebody who brings it to OTL, who licenses it and creates it into a new company or to an existing company to sell that product. Sometimes it's a tough decision. Do you license it? Do you start a new company? If they license it, they need to know that there's a big market for it and somebody who wants to license it. Starting a startup is harder. You know Gainesville's not a big town. It's not that easy to find experienced business leaders, experienced management to go out and find capital. Sometimes our companies get investment capital from Boston or from Boulder or from Austin or from San Diego. But the process of finding capital is always a difficult mountain to climb. So licensing also creates immediate income. A startup may not be realized until five to 10 years down the road, but again, is there somebody out that wants to license it or do I need to start my own company? Here's just a little bit about what's really critical in creating companies. You have to have a good technology. You have to have entrepreneurs with business experience. That's our least abundant resource here. You have to find funding. If you've got a great idea and a good CEO, we'll find you funding. Facilities, those wet labs, super, super important. 
and education. Uh, we utilize students tremendously. We have internships. Uh, we have student volunteer groups. Uh, that is another huge advantage of being at UF and being integrated into the UF system. Starting a company is a fairly simple process. This is uh, uh, Ash Mayura's uh, lean startup process. Do you have a product that provides a solution to a problem or are you a problem in search for solution? That happens a lot. So have you solved a problem that people want to solve that's important? Have you built something that people want to buy? We get people all the time that come in and say, oh, I, I thought of this great idea for dispensing tape. And we're like, yeah, you might want to look out there. That's been done. Uh, that's the advantage of Google and net searching services. We can find the US patent uh, database. We can find if it's been done. And then the big problem is, how do I accelerate growth and grow the company? Really, that's where a lot of our volunteer mentors come in. We have a gentleman that literally flies up here in his own plane monthly to meet with companies. He's the former president of the ortho division of Johnson & Johnson. But he believes so much. He's not even a UF alum, but he believes in what we're doing. And he says, nobody in South Florida is doing anything like this, that he wanted to be a part of it. So he comes up to help companies scale and accelerate growth by offering his advice and direction. So that's how the process works pretty basically, is inventors, researchers, OTL, licensing or starting up, and then incubators to help the startups provided by UF to continue to grow the Alachua County, Florida, and national economy. This is my card. Uh, feel free to contact me anytime. We love to show the place off. Uh, hopefully when COVID dies down, we're looking around July, August to start tours up again. We hope, we all hope. Um, and uh, otherwise, be happy to answer any questions. My email address is down in the corner. I know that was fast. I know it's a lot of info. I will, uh, they're recording this, and I'll certainly make this presentation available for you as well. But I wanted you to get an idea of what UF is doing to make new inventions available and to assist the economy in the state of Florida. So there you go. Uh, we'll stop it there and be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mark. That was, that was terrific. Um, I, I have to say, I really appreciate your overview of all the companies because I think uh, one of the hardest things for me putting this course together was, you know, we had a limited time frame that we could do lectures. And so I had to sort of pick and choose a bit, <clears throat> which was really the hardest task for me. So thanks for that, that really comprehensive overview. Um, I, I, one of the questions I had was, um, the thing I've always been kind of curious about is, um, you probably have a large number of people in your incubator that are university um, faculty. So what determines whether someone is going to say, remain on campus and work in their own, say, respective labs versus they end up coming out to say the Sid Martin or the hub? Why, why do you, why, I mean, because there's a little bit, there's, there's certainly a blurring of the lines with right. domain, I guess, um, you know, with UF get, providing so much support. How is that, how is that determined whether, where they're gonna kind of physically be doing their work? My boss uh, is the assistant VP of research and my boss's boss is the VP of research, which don't forget to tell him I said he's a great guy, <laughs> just a great guy. But, but essentially, there is a concern about a blurring of the lines there in a conflict of interest. So technically, when a company is formed, we like the researcher to stay involved and maybe be the chief scientific officer or um, 
one of the advisors to the company in a technical capacity, but very few faculty want to quit their research and go run a company. And frankly, we don't want them to. My, my, my famous story is about, I give talks every semester at the beginning of the semester at the med school about how to form a company, the process and everything. About two years ago, a guy called me two weeks after the talk and he said, I have Googled PNL and I can't find it. I said, it's P and L, profit and loss. And he went, oh my gosh. <laughs> They're not business people. They're rocket scientists. And we want them to stay rocket scientists. So generally, we go out and find C-level talent, CEOs, CFOs, to run the company separately. They maintain a relationship with the company to advise on the research and the product. And that's really the reason the hub was built because it's only two blocks from campus. And a lot of them want to come down during their lunch hour, check on everything, give a little advice and leave. That's hard to do out in a latch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And one other question I had, and then we'll turn it over to anybody else uh, that might have some questions. Um, do you ever run into any issues with um, the uh, during the licensing process? I guess since you're working through OTL, um, is it anybody that's affiliated with the University of Florida? They're always going to uh, need to work with UF as far as licensing their technology and making any money from their technology. I mean. There's nothing they can say, hey, while I, in the process of doing my research, my NIH work, I discovered this really neat thing. I've got a great idea and I wanna pursue that. Um, I can't do that on my own though, as long as I'm under the purview of UF, is that correct? That is what the Bayh-Dole Act was about, is the university owns the intellectual property created and the key phrase is with substantial university resources. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes that's a gray area and very hard to find, particularly in IT. When people <laughs> are creating a software program, they may create something that's not related to the research, and they say, I did that at home. But we kind of have a saying in this business, you can write software anywhere, it's hard to clone a mouse in your garage. So when a scientific person comes to us and says, yeah, I discovered the cure for lung cancer, but I did it in my kitchen. So you guys don't, yeah, I don't think so. So we very rarely have those discussions. Most everybody goes through a sort of a orientation at the beginning and they understand it. And occasionally I'll give you one quick example. We had a guy from the physics department come to us and he said, I invented something totally unrelated to my research at home. Um, my brother is president of the National Concrete Manufacturers Association. I didn't know there was one, but there is. And he invented a little robot. It almost looks like a Roomba that connects to a water hose that cleans out the inside of the concrete truck. If you don't have something like that, you have to put a respirator on and a oxygen pack and go in there and hose it out yourself. And the National Concrete Association wanted to buy this for $500,000 from him. We wrote him a letter of release and said, this is not related. He did this on his own. It wasn't created with substantial university resources. Mm -hmm. So there is that line there. Very seldom is it called into question and it almost never applies to scientific discovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, do we have other questions? I don't see any, but sign me up. I'm ready to <laughs> something. Do <laughs> you have any good ideas, Julianne? <laughs> oh, Walter has a question. Walter, Walter has one. Unmute. Okay. That was a fascinating and unusual and unexpected uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I yes, really learned a lot and I, I look forward to being able to visit. Great. Love to have you. Um, I think the neatest thing about a visit, Walter, is the companies themselves. I mean, when you go through the building, 
it is just fascinating. We have one guy, um, I should have mentioned him, uh, Al Fosmo, he's been here for a while. He has a company named Oxthera. He created an additive to dog food that the more the dog eats, the more weight it loses. 80% of companion animals are overweight. So when I first got here five years ago, Al said, I'm trying to sell this to veterinarians. It's by prescription only. And I said, let me call a friend of mine that's a VP of Purina. Now Purina is going to sell dog weight loss formula. It doesn't work on people yet, which I'm really trying to get him into that. But yeah, yeah. But but he's uh, he's doing fascinating work in the animal nutrition. There's just so many companies. We actually have a, a, a company in here, Kairos Transportation, that transports people that can't drive uh, or that have minor illnesses to the doctor, to the hospital, so forth, instead of just calling for an ambulance at $1,000 a pop, stuff like that. They bill Medicare. They're legit. We keep an eye on them. We have a company that's making new quantum dots, which are going to be the next generation of organic LEDs for color displays. They just signed a $30 million contract with Samsung. So there's just cool stuff here that is gee whiz. I didn't know they were doing that. So, so Mark, uh, what is the, what's the typical, I think my understanding of the incubation process is you, you, you're given a specific time frame for that. Is that correct? Not necessarily. We have three criteria for kind of saying, okay, over the next six months, you need to gradually move out. One of them is size. We never rent anybody more than 15% of our allowable space. So if somebody comes in and says, look, I need 25,000 square foot. Well, you need to find it on your own or we'll help you because you can't have it here. Number two is money. And I don't mean a dollar, but if they're reasonably profitable for 12 to 18 months, they need to move out, let some other poor schmuck that doesn't have any money move in. So they need to go. The third's the bad one. We set milestones for them every quarter with their advisor. If they don't hit them for like nine months in a row, mm, sorry, yeah. you probably need to go. You can reapply in six months. Have I kicked some companies out? Yeah. Uh, rule of thumb, software companies are in here 12 to 24 months. Medical device is about three to five years. Biotech, biopharma is about four to seven years. Okay. So for the, the example that you gave of the person that needs the 25,000 square feet, so let's say they find that space, you, you would still be able to work with them though. They, I mean, yeah, they we, still we um, have them a, provide them at that point. We have yeah. companies that are affiliate companies. They work with us, even though they don't need space, they're outside the incubator. And we have graduate, a lot of graduates who are like, hey, well, we'd like to stay in touch. We'd like to keep our advisor. We uh, One of the great things we have, God love them, we have access to the entire UF library system for free. For, and that's huge. Yeah. I mean, you know, just subscribing to the Journal of Bacteriology is like $8,000 a year. Right. So these companies can use that free of charge. So they pay us a small fee and they stay affiliated with us. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. right. Well, uh, Ken, Ken Burns has a question. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was involved in this process way back when, when Sid Martin was first developed. Oh. And actually, I was on the first AAV patent that the university got. And the question that I remember was the challenge, actually, of dealing with OTL before we got to what you do. And I guess the question I'm asking you, which is only semi-loaded, is whether, whether or not uh, OTL has become a lot more sophisticated in terms of their ability uh, to deal with these issues. The second aspect is similar, and that is some people uh, in the biotech areas, gene therapy, 
uh, feel that um, the, the university is very uh, hypersensitive uh, to getting involved with uh, trials involving uh, biological products. Could you address either of those without getting in danger? No, I'm retiring in June. I'll address it directly. I, don't... I, I retired some years ago, so I can ask this. <laughs> what are they going to do? Fire me? I don't know. Honestly, yes. The, 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 the answer to your first question is I, I ran the OTL at Washington University in St. Louis and at Indiana University before I came down here to run the incubators. And then I was, you know, a little old to take over OTL here. They hired a great guy out of the University of Miami who used to be at University of Michigan. It really, unfortunately, depends on the philosophy of the leader. Um, I, what I like about what Jim's done is he's actually uh, almost the opposite uh, of your question. He streamlined the process, made it easier. License are more... Um, templated. They're more accessible. Uh, the faculty can see them before they're actually written. So I do believe over the last 40 years of by Dole that I some OTLs had a bad reputation. What's that, Ron? Uh, unmuted. I, you, you were frozen for a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, some OTLs did have a reputation being very hard to deal with. UF was kind of in the middle of that genre. I remember if you had to deal with Wisconsin, people would say, forget it. So it was the philosophy of the leader. I think in the last 10 years in particular, they've streamlined that process. So that's question one. Question two, let's face it. If you're a university administrator, you have three things you need to consider. Raising funds, that's huge. That's most of what they do from alumni, corporations, et cetera. Number two is being risk averse, avoiding risk that might cause the university litigation, everything else. And number three, firing football and basketball coaches. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I had to throw that in. And my <laughs> wife always says I got the wrong profession. I should have just been a really bad football coach and I could have made millions just bouncing around. Dude. <laughs> but, but in reality, it, it is part of the university's mission to be risk averse, to avoid getting in controversial areas. I would agree with you. Gene therapy up until the last three years has been a very uh, risky proposition, but I think as AAV gets more accepted as a vector, more defined, as they attack more childhood diseases and things that can't be treated any other way, I see the autonomy of the hospital of UF Health and stuff overruling the, the risk profile of the university and taking on more of those clinical trials. I hope that answers it for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, are there any other questions out there? Julie, I don't, I don't okay. see any. Well, I'd like to thank our speaker again, Mark Long, uh, very much for your time today. Fascinating. A great start to the course. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Tremendous. Great audience. Great to see. Thanks for showing up. And I know they have more good ones to come. So uh, all the best. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Stay well.